Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So apologies I haven't been doing more videos recently, I've just been really busy and I don't know if you can tell but the tone of my voice is slightly different. I've just been repeatedly ill and <laughs> it's really getting me down. It's nothing serious, it's just, you know, typical colds this time of year, having a young child, going to nursery, bringing back stuff and giving me every illness that there is under the sun. Um, but to get to the point of this video, um, a lot of you in the past have asked me to talk more about flails. Um, I have a disclosure to make. I actually made a large video about flails um, quite some time ago and I was never quite happy with it and I ended up not pushing the publish button and I've since decided that was a good idea because it was a rubbish video. But I will do a better video about flails at some point in the future. I have done, if, you're, if you haven't seen it, I have done a previous video talking about flails and the fact that flails um, were a thing and they were they were something that was around in the Middle Ages but not particularly common but they do appear in period artwork uh, and they even appear a certain type of threshold type flail appears in um, a treaties as well, a fencing treaties. But related to flails, kind of, is the subject of percussion weapons, be it an axe or a mace or a warhammer. And one little point that I was thinking about and a lot of time when I see people do unarmed self-defence stuff against um, knives, they aim to essentially arrest or stop or control the hand or the forearm, because that makes quite a lot of sense, really, if we're honest about it. Um, unless you can run away, which is obviously preferable, unless you can use another weapon like a pistol um, or your own knife or a sword or whatever. Um, if you have to fight someone, unarmed versus knife, then trying to control their weapon arm and trying to get the weapon off them is very clearly a good thing to do. And there are many ways that you can do that. But when I see people um, encounter things like um, baseball bats for example or I've even seen a demonstration done against a, a pool cue or a snooker cue for those of you in the UK um, although we do have pool as well but anyway um, and they encounter the person's arm or hand and then very often in these demonstrations the weapon stops swinging. Now this is where this is the point I want to make in this video and where it connects to flails. So a lot of people cite the the strength of a flail is that if you stop the shaft swinging the other one still swings around and hits you. Now that also happens with these because in actual fact when you swing a weapon that's very end heavy and even something like a stick or a sword, this does apply to, but it's more of a factor when you're dealing with something where essentially the point of balance is, look, somewhere near the head. Okay, so where it's a percussive weapon or an axe or a, a warhammer, something like that. Um, because the end is so heavy, what happens is, if I was swinging this at someone, and you'll notice naturally with this type of top heavy weapon, you do tend to lead slightly with the hand. Now, if you're, if you're using a sword against someone who, who uses this type of um, heavy-ended weapon, be it a mace or an axe or whatever, then very often you can get a hit in on the hand. But experience has taught me um, that if someone's swinging something which has a heavy end on it and you hit the hand, yes, you might take some of the fingers off, yes, you might incapacitate, you know, you might incapacitate the person, you might to a degree remove the threat, but in that moment, this end has a lot of momentum. And it's like a flail in that sense, in that this is like the shaft, this is like the chain or the pivot, and this is like the hitting end. So when you hit the person's arm or hand, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing an unarmed defense or a grab, um, or whether you're hitting it with your own stick or a sword, when you stop or hit this thing, the end will continue to whip around and move. And so it's very, very important when you're doing these, whether it's unarmed defense or indeed whether you're just chopping into the person's hand or arm with a sword, to be wary of that and be mindful of the fact that the end of the weapon will keep swinging. And quite simply what will happen if you don't make distance or traverse, move out of the way in some way, or indeed deal with it with something else. So for example, you could hit them in the arm and then put your shield up or hit them in the arm and then put an arm up uh, to block the incoming uh, shaft, for example. It might hurt, but it's better than getting hit in the head. Um, if you don't do one of those things, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna go, ha, smack, stop the hand, and then the ax is gonna continue coming around and clock you in the head or neck or wherever they were aiming at. So these type of top heavy weapons Whilst in the past I've said that generally speaking in an unarmoured um, scenario, in an unarmoured one-on-one -on -one fight, I would always choose a sword over one of these, um, these do have some virtues which are more exaggerated, shall we say, because of their top-ended nature. Um, 
and that you have to be wary of and you have to watch out for. So there we go, simple point, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, but these top heavy weapons, you have to watch out for if you're stopping or encountering this end of the thing, that the top end will still whip around. And of course that also bears to shields as well. If uh, someone swung an axe at me and I planted my shield into their incoming forearm, which is a perfectly fine thing to do, you have to remember that that axe might continue coming round over the top end of the shield. Uh, so you have to be wary of that. So many times you might actually want to stop a little bit higher up, um, it, actually in the shaft of the weapon, be it with the edge of your shield or the flat of your shield, so it will actually arrest the movement of that axe. Um, if you are forced to do an, an unarmed defence, if someone swings a, a baseball bat or a, a snooker key at your head, then again be wary of this thing and, and um, it's oftentimes better to move into the motion, as I'm sure many of you out there who do martial arts will know, move into or away from or both. Okay, So if you move into the centre of the origin of motion, in other words towards their arms, if you move in towards their arms and away from the motion of the weapon, it's like likely that that continuing swing is going to go past you and not hit you but always be mindful of the fact that if it's something that's particularly end heavy like an axe or a mace it will swing round further because it has more momentum okay something like a pool cue won't swing very much and it won't do you much harm okay but something like an axe will do you a lot of harm if it carries on swinging and hits your head so there we go um top heavy weapons, be mindful of the fact that they have a different type of motion and, mem and momentum when you encounter them than something like a stick or a sword does. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.